In this video we're going to analyze uh, factorial design and see how that fits into the framework of linear models. The example we'll look at has um, two treatment variables and uh, a response variable, a quantitative response variable. And this is looking at how herbivores affect the abundance of plants um, living in an intertidal habitat. And we've got uh, two levels for the herbivores predictor. Uh, we've got um, a herbivores absent and herbivores present and the herbivores absent is denoted as minus and I'm assuming that the herbivores present is devoted, denoted as plus and then we've got two levels for the height predictor, treatment predictor as well. Um, one, the one level is low and the other level is mid. And then the response variable here is the square root surface area. Okay, so first I'm going to fit this model here where I've got my response variable on the left of the tilde and then I've got one treatment variable here, this is the herbivores one and then the other treatment variable here, that's the height one. And I'm calling this the no interaction model. Um, a little bit later on in this video we're going to fit uh, an interaction model where I'm going to combine herbivores and height together in a new predictor variable. But for this model I'm not doing that, I'm just keeping herbivores and height uh, just by themselves without interacting. So this is my no interaction model and then I'm going to visualize the model fit using this scatterplot here. So as I explained in, in an earlier video, uh, in experimental designs where we've got um, a treatment variable that uh, has discrete has a, a discrete number of levels, uh, we sometimes need to jitter the points to move them apart so that we can see a little more clearly what's going on. And so that's what I've done here is I've, I've jittered the points. And so what this represents, it, there's a lot going on in this graph so it's going to take a little bit of explaining. Uh, as usual we've got the response variable on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis I've got the, the herbivores treatment um, and we've got two levels, uh, minus and, and plus and this corresponds to uh, herbivores absent is the minus level and herbivores present is the plus level. And then I've got different colors according to the other treatment variable, height. So the red points are when the height variable was set at low, uh, I think this corresponds to low tide, and the black points are when uh, this treatment variable was set at the mid level so halfway between low tide and high tide. And um, what else have we got going on here? Uh, we've got these dashed lines here. So these represent the uh, predictions, the predicted response variable for the different heights and the different herbivore treatments. So if we, if we focus on the red line first, the predicted response variable for herbivore treatment set to minus and height set to low would be given by where, where the arrow is right here. So 25, something like that. And then uh, for herbivore treatment plus and low height, the predicted response variable is here. So just under 20, maybe 19, 18, something like that. And
end and then if we look at the black line we've got a uh, predicted response for herbivore minus and height mid is is here so maybe 20, 25, 26 and finally the last combination would be herbivores plus height mid would be here so around 20, 21 something like that. Okay so those are my predictions from my no interaction model but when we have two predictor variables so we've got two predictor variables here herbivores and height I can add an interaction variable that is these two variables multiplied together so if I go back to uh, actually no let's explain this slightly differently um, what an interaction model is is allowing for is it's allowing for the effect of herbivore treatment to differ according to height because right now in this in this model in this no interaction model when I change the herbivore treatment from minus to plus in the low height category my response variable decreases from here to, to here so from about there down to there if I do the same kind of thing going from minus to plus but within the height mid so the black points so along the black line I'm getting a similar effect I'm going from here down to to here so it's because these lines are parallel that I'm getting the same treatment effect for the, the herbivore treatment when I fix height either at low or mid and that's that's a description of a model that doesn't have interaction by contrast what if if I go from minus to plus for the herbivory treatment that changed according to where the height was set at low or at mid then I would need to use what's called an interaction model so to specify an interaction model instead of putting a plus in between the two predictors I put a multiplication symbol a star then this is what's called uh, an interaction model so let me fit it and then I'll visualize the fit and then I'll kind of run through that uh, idea again just now that, that we that we looked at just now okay so what this is telling us is the difference between this plot and this plot is in the no interaction model the, the two lines are parallel in the interaction model the two lines are not parallel and that's because we have interaction in this model uh, what does that mean okay so let's run through this let's focus on the red points so when height is set at low and let's predict the response variable when the herbivore treatment is set at minus so the prediction is is here it's at 30 something 30 not quite 35 maybe 32 something like that whereas when the herbivore treatment goes up to plus still within the red points so low height so I'm here then the expected response the predicted response is is, is here maybe 15 contrast that with what happens with 
uh, the herbivore treatment effect for the black points. So now I'm on this line. So I'm when when the herbivore treatment is at minus, I'm predicting the response to be about 22. Whereas when the herbivore treatment is at plus, I'm at this end of the black dash line. I'm predicting the uh, response variable to be, I don't know, 20, 25, 24, something like that. So it looks like from this graph that when height is low, so I'm talking about the red points, so when height is low, when the herbivore treatment changes from minus to plus, the predicted square root surface area goes down quite quite steeply. It goes down from 30 something down to 15. Less than 15. 12. Whereas when height is at mid, the herbivore effect going from minus to plus is to increase the predicted response variable. It goes up from like 22 to 24. Okay, so the question is which model fits the data the best? So what is the, the scale of the improvement in fit going from this model to this model? So from this model to this model, what is the improvement in fit? So we can test that. And we test that using an F-test of improvement in fit, just like we did in the last few videos. And again, we're going to use the ANOVA function to do that. Uh, we're using the ANOVA function slightly differently here, though. We're specifying two models. First, we specify the no interaction model, and then we specify the interaction model. And so what this is going to do is going to, it's going to give us an F-test that compares these two models. OK, so um, we're doing a hypothesis test. We should lay out our four steps. So uh, null hypothesis, the effect of the herbivore treatment does not depend on the height treatment. That's the null hypothesis. So that would correspond to the no interaction model. The herbivore treatment, the effect of the herbivore treatment does not depend on the height treatment. And when, it, when I'm talking about the effect of the herbivore treatment, I'm talking about how does the expected response change as I go from one level of the herbivore treatment to the other level of the herbivore treatment. And the null hypothesis is saying that uh, it doesn't depend on the height. It's, it's the same. It's, it's decreasing. It's going down. It's going down the same amount, whether we're talking about low height or mid height. The alternative hypothesis is that the effect of the herbivore treatment does depend on the height, which is, is the interaction model. Okay, because here the herbivore treatment effect, okay, so so what what happens to the average square root surface area when I move from one level of the herbivore treatment to the other level for the the low height points, it's it's a big decrease, but for the mid height points, the black ones, there's a very slight increase. So so that's what the alternative hypothesis is saying. Um, second step, uh, test statistic. There it is. 11.003 is an F statistic. Uh, third step, p-value. There it is. 0 0.001549. Uh, fourth step, decision and conclusion. We're going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis because the p-value is smaller than the significance level 0.05. The conclusion, therefore, is that the effect of the herbivore treatment does depend on the height treatment. 
So in other words, there's a significant improvement in fit from the no interaction model to the interaction model. So in other words, this is the model that we want to use here. Okay, so uh, we've decided that this is the model we want to use, so now we can make predictions. Okay, so we're going to use our summary function to get our coefficient estimates, and then we're going to use these estimated parameters to come up with our predictions. Okay, so let's do that. So um, this is a little bit more complicated than before because we've got, we've got two treatment variables here and we only had one before, so, but now we've got two to worry about. So um, if we look at the table, we've got an entry for the intercept term, we've got an entry for what it's calling herbivores plus, we've got an entry for height mid, and we've got an entry for herbivores plus with a, with, a, with a colon and then height mid. Okay, so what does all this mean? First of all, I have to think about what is the reference level. So the reference level is whatever's not in the table of results. So I've got herbivores plus, so herbivores minus must be the reference level for the herbivore treatment. I've got height mid, so height low must be the reference level for the height treatment. Okay, so if I want to make a prediction for herbivores minus and height low, then all I have to do is look at the intercept term. So that's the predicted square root surface area for herbivores minus and height low. So it's, it's here on the graph. So it's telling me that that point on the graph is 32.915, where my arrow is right now. Okay, what about herbivores plus and height low? So herbivores plus and height low. So I'm here, so I'm, I'm roughly, uh, what does that look like? About a little bit over 10? Maybe 11? I don't know. Let's calculate it. So to calculate that, I'm going to combine the intercept with herbivores plus. Okay, so if I do that calculation, I get 10.4. Okay. Uh, next, let's do herbivores minus and height mid. Herbivores minus, height mid, we're doing the black points. We're here. So da, 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 over here, uh, 22, something like that, 22, 23. Uh, let's do the calculation. We're going to take the intercept and then height mid. Combine those two, and I get 22.5. Okay, and then last one is herbivores plus and height mid. So we're doing the black points and we're over here, so we're over here. So trace that across here, so we're at 24, 25, something like that. Let's do the calculation. So to get this one, we have to add up all four numbers because we have to remember this interaction piece as well. And so if I do that, I get 25.551. Whew, that was a lot of work. Uh, we can also use the prediction function to get these numbers without having to do all that hand calculation. And so there's my, my four predictions there. Uh, always a good idea to try and match these numbers with your graph. Okay. So that is how to analyze a factorial design uh, where we have interaction uh, in the linear model framework.